Hello everybody, uh, it's Carl. i just done a 40 minute video that didn't record on the MVVM uh, dependency injection, um, compiled bindings, and it didn't record. So I'm actually just gonna quickly talk over it to be honest and uh, just <laughs> go through what I've done in a, a quick version. So um, if you want to know, uh, I will share any of these links in the video. So we've got um, a quick overview of MVVM. Uh, I am actually recording, thank goodness. It is actually recording this time. Um, a quick overview of the MVVM pattern, uh, the structure for the folders. I'm not gonna go into much detail on it, if I'm honest, because there are some videos already existing. There's quite a few, uh, some much better than mine, but um, I was just gonna do a video just so you can outline the structure yourselves. Um, so the basic rationale of MVVM is just separation of concerns so you can um, create logic that's separate from a UI so you can reuse that logic. It gives you the ability to say upgrade your UI halfway through production in case there's a change of style or use the same logic code for a couple of different applications. Uh, really I really am a big fan of the MVVM approach. Um, I just think it, it's clean. I think it's a clean way to structure your application. So you, you view your pages um, connected to a view model using a binding context, uh, just like a, a link, if you will, the same way you'd link to a, a, a JavaScript page in a, a website, in a website, a HTML page, you could link to a, a script. Okay, um, and your model really, I. The easiest way I can describe it is, say for example, you've got a list of data, a list of people or a person class, uh, and each person in that class has a property, uh, a name, a date of birth, an age, and it's a way that you can put structure to you um, um, objects. Okay, um, so I'll put links to that in the video description. We will need to use this I notify property changed uh, a lot of people are put off by MVVM because it is it does take a little bit of time to um, structure your application, get it started. Boilerplate stuff is quite you know it's quite um, time consuming, and there are a lot of MVVM frameworks that people tend to use. Like Prism uh, is a very good one. I've not um, tried it myself when I was learning MVVM. I was tempted to use Prism, if I'm honest with you, uh, just because it was a popular choice. Um, but I didn't want to. I've only been doing this for about a year and a half, and even Maui was on the horizon not long after starting learning Xamarin Forms. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't tie into any frameworks, so I, I don't tend to use them. Um, so we will use this iNotify property change. Um, iNotify, this, this MVVM pattern, they dates back to WPF and it hasn't really changed to be fair. Um, so this is actually an example for WPF but I think it's a cleaner example than the uh, Xamarin Forms example. Uh, simply put that um, when you change a property it calls this on property change. Uh, you could pass in a name or not um, and then what it will do is it will update the UI. It's got an event listener that updates the UI. In terms of uh, showing data in collections, I tend to use the collection view. It has had some issues with iOS, but I know that um, a lot of effort has gone into, um, well, that's older iOS, so a lot of effort has gone into working with that. There is another one called List View. Uh, James, again, on his channel, does do some videos on collection view, these list view, and his use case scenario. So you can still use the list view if you want to. I like the collection view because I just think it, um, it has some nice features such as the paging. When you get to the end of a list, you can set up paging so you can load data dynamically. Um, in terms of collection view, I will post this. There's a, they used to do these um, challenges whenever they release something new in Xamarin Forms. So there's a carousel view um, challenge as well. And this is really, really good because there's a, um, a GitHub repo where people have spent some time creating some really stunning um, applications in Xamarin Forms using the collection view. And all of this, all of these are still valid. You can really learn how to make some beautiful UIs using this um, repo. Um, in terms of the dependency injection, 
the whole point really of dependency injection is when you look at some examples they'll be they'll be newing up view models or newing up pages and um, it's a way to avoid newing up and gluing up I suppose um, is you can you can still new up you know if you're making a quick application in a lot of the a lot of the times that I've made applications in the past where I were, wasn't doing it for production reasons I wouldn't bother with dependency injection just for playing around with UI um, but that's because you'd probably need to use some in Xamarin forms you'd need to use Autofac or some third party LOC container um, but it's so easy now with the MAUI you can just well I'll show you in code but um, yeah and again the UI that I've based this little application that I've been playing with is um, an open source one from um, a good looking um, Xamarin Forms repo with loads and loads of brilliant UIs um, for you to have a look at in your own time. Again, I, I coded all this in a video and then it, I realized at the end that it didn't record, which uh, is definitely recording this time. Right, okay, so um, we're just using an extension method to declare these, uh, well it's one page and one view model, but you don't need to do it that way, you can just do it like this. Uh, that is actually an example from the um, the new podcast application, demo application, it's, it's brilliant, it's a, a great open source project that uh, you can download and just see how Microsoft are, are intending to use some of the MAUI features. So I downloaded that, I had a look at implementing how they've done shell, um, but yeah, have a, have a look at that in your own time, I'll, I'll put a, a link into that. Uh, so let's just have a look at our folder structure for the application. So we've got our views, which are your pages, and um, again, so we could go on, right click on your solution, uh, add a new folder. Am I running? I am running. So right click, add a new folder, and then can you do that? Let's add a new folder, uh, views to, views to. Um, and then what you do is you'd right click add uh, add a new. Now this is very important because it defaults to the Xamarin Forms content. So you need to make sure you do go down here and you do click the um, Maui Maui stuff. Okay, and um, this be you know whatever it is home view do. Okay. Um, so that's what I did in the other video. I just created this view and I copied the UI from that open source project. And then once you've registered your singletons for your home page, home view, and your view model. So your view model we haven't done. So again, you'd create a folder called view models. You'd right click, you'd add a new class. So that's different. It's just a class and this would be, I don't know, about um, view model. Now we haven't got one of these, so let's just do, let's just do that actually very quickly. View model dot CS. So let's just take that bit. We created this, make it public. We're gonna extract a Let's uh, generate a constructor. Okay, let's go to the views, add a new view that we can bind to. Uh, nearly did it, nearly did the wrong thing. I think it's this one. Okay, let's go down here again. So we want, let's just tidy this up. So put a comment in, uh, views. And then VMs. Now, there'll be somebody who says this is awful the way I've done this, but it's only a demo. It's only just to show people the structure of MVVM. Okay, let's add that to there. And 
Now, this is what I didn't show because I've already done it. Because I'm using something new to .NET 6, this global usings. And what it does is it just helps resolve things so much easier than adding usings all over the place. So if we didn't have that, you'd get this. So again, at header level to your um, project, just want to add a new class. You want to just name it global usings. And then you'd paste in your using that you'd resolve. So let's resolve it here. Where did we? Let's resolve it so you can sort of see how I would do it. Okay, copy that from there and then pop it into the global usings. So we've got to add the global, otherwise it won't pick it up. Global, Let's see if that works. Go back to here and yeah, so it's resolved. So I created new pages. Um, I have skipped ahead here obviously because I've done this once already. So normally you would see something like new, I don't know, home page here, home view. And that's what we're trying to avoid with the dependency injection. So what we're actually doing now, oh, go back to what it was, is just new it up as we start once, resolve it by dependency injection, pass it in in the constructor, and then we can use it. So, as I've already got, um, already got these pages created, let's just have a look at this binding context. So where are we? Let's just check. We've got our views. We created two view models. Let's just do the binding element of it. So on your view, you will want to bind. Now you can, you can do this in XAML. Um, and you'll see some examples where they do it at the start of the XAML code. I prefer to do it here, and it could be wrong, I'm not sure. So, because we've created and resolved the view model, we need to bring the view model in and bind it up to this page using this binding context. So the binding context is just built into the MVVM model with the whole platform. And what we're basically saying is, the same way you would bring in um, a script tag. You, you're giving it a, a location, you're saying this is where it is. We're pointing this um, binding context to this view model. Um, so we're gonna do the same on that other about page because we haven't connected them up. And we want to, um, this is about view model, I believe. And we can call that view model as well. So there are pages bound up. What do we need to do next on the... Okay, so we've bound them up and let's just do a quick breakpoint. Now, because I've got some data in here, again, I did say I've just done all this. So we've got this string here that's automatically declared and connected. And then in the view model, let's just check, put a breakpoint here. We'll just check very quickly that this whole process is working. So just to, sorry to keep talking over here, but we've, 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 uh, oh, we don't want that. So we have added a singleton for our um, dependency injection. Then what we've done is we've done a binding context between our view model and our page, our view. Okay, that's linked them two together. In my view model, I have some static text that are that's getting generated at um, on the constructor. So if we have a look here, we are bound up. So those two are definitely bound up. Um, so that's all good. What did we say we we're going to discuss? So we're going to discuss um, some bindings. So let's just do some. Let's just do a label. So copy a label from the view model. Let's close all this down so it's easier for you to see. 
So let's just copy a label from here just to show you the importance or benefits of what we're doing. So outside of here, okay. Um, is that to public? So it's accessible by the few model. And then, so this is just a blank view, view model at the moment. And in order to make the actual MVVM structure work, we need to uh, bring in this I notify property change and the best way of doing it is using some inheritance because we've already got two view models. We've got a base view model and a base view model feeds this particular code into all of these view models that we might have. And we do that at the top of the page. So we're gonna just do inheritance. Uh, the reason we're doing inheritance is we wouldn't want to use this code on every single view model. So this this code again is the I property notify I notify property change. And this is what's triggering an event to update the UI. Again, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that for this video because James does a lot better job of explaining it, but um please please watch this video as well. So this is more around structuring your app. So we've got um, inheritance bringing in the view model on the home page but we haven't got any anything happening on this on this so we could bring that in here as well uh, so base view now we, we might be okay without any yeah so we don't need any um, usings because it's all in the same folder okay so that's what we're doing there. We've now got a completely, um, a complete, the, the complete requirements for the MVVM structure. We've got something that will um, update the UI element by calling this um, method, this on property change method in the base view model. And again, the reason we're doing it this way is just to keep it dry. Don't repeat ourselves throughout the application. Okay, so what do we need to do next? Now, this is this video is a little bit out of order because obviously I've done all of this already once and um, I was a little bit heartbroken when I realized it hasn't recorded. Um, okay, so we've got a constructor um, that if you remember I generated as I created the page and let's copy these over one by one and um, so do we need to do that probably not i think we could probably just run it now um actually no let's talk about the compiled bindings so in the view model if you don't do compiled bindings you won't know if a label has actually been bound so you've got the the bindings that we use so if you look at all of these examples the source is bound it's using this binding so the collection view as an item source in your view model which is your monkeys list and then within that monkeys list it attaches to a model uh, a structure for each item and in the item that that structure so the model uh, let's bring that model that we're using so uh, let's see if I can bring it over. So this model, so we've got the list of data that is in your view model. And then every item in that view model list has a data type. So in this one, I imagine it's just called, um, has, it got, has it got any more text to it? Has it got how it's doing it? No, so imagine this one is just called monkey. And a monkey has a property of um, name and it has a location and that's what we're doing here. So if we look at our example in the home page. So let's just close some of these down. Um, and 
So we're creating an observable collection. Now you don't have to use observable collections. You can use lists and you can use arrays, but for this example, observable collection is perfectly fine. When the constructor is called as soon as this page is loaded, um, we are calling this get events, and then we are just creating a new observable collection with this type of data, and that's your model, okay? And then we're just using the add function, that's extension function that it's built in with the observable collection. So with the observable collection, you can do remove as well, and probably lots more you can do, but. So what we're doing is we're just adding new items, and each one of these items has a description, it has a name, it has a date, and it has an, a link to the images folder, um, just a string. Um, okay, so when we hit go, let's just put some breakpoints on to see it in action. Um, let's go here. Perhaps if it shows the locals, it'd be quite good if we can put something up here as well. So this constructor is what's called first when the class is loaded and we've got our locals. Now if you look here before anything's done the count set to zero the, this is null because it's not been instantiated yet with this new up here and um, so let's go through and pop into that method function and then it's just been newed up so it's no longer null then we are adding these two items and as they're added the count is going up now we can go to our UI and we've got the two items that we've added now that is simply cut and pasted so let's have a quick look at our UI for that one view model and just so you can see how it all fits together and then we'll just talk about the compiled bindings very quickly and then I think that'll do um, so I have I have updated just to get the images working so the first quarter of this UI really is irrelevant to what we've just done this is all just static then we've got a stack layout which contains a collection view and then under that we've got some buttons in another stack layout. Uh, if we look at this collection view which we've just talked about we're, we're attaching to the view model okay we're attaching to our view model which we've done the binding context to and then we are attaching to the list of data called events and because I've done some compiled bindings so I've brought in the namespace for my view models and my model so the whole the whole UI for this page uh, has been given a data type um, uh, f for the view model okay so that means that if I had a property here which is a public property it now gives me the option to find that public property which before it wouldn't do if I change that to one uh, it automatically picks up that that doesn't exist in the view model so that just makes your whole code a lot more testable the last bit here is that that this um, data template that sits inside your collection view has your layout and then it has all the XAML items now, so what I've done here is again brought in the actual model so that's the model the data structure for every item that's in this list and it gives me the ability to do the exact same so I can now check what's available to bind to so name is available to bind to and that's your compile bindings so you just bring it in at the top so I've done it this way but there might be other ways so um, so I brought in my model class from up here so that when the application compiles it checks well actually 
Does descriptions actually exist? And it doesn't. So it throws up an error. So it, it really does help just to uh, make sure the application is tested um, and, and it all works. In f actual fact, you can actually, it will prevent you from building as well. So it, it's, it should be what you do. If you're just doing some layout work and you want to play around, then perhaps you don't need to do that. You can actually use, um, I think it's X type as well. If you, you know, if you're struggling with it, you can one element that you don't want to do all the data types for. You can just use uh, something called X type, and it's in the documents as well. Um, so we covered data binding. We covered MVVM. We've not really covered what i property change really does at its deepest core but it's an event listener from the ui to your view model that says okay something's happened in the ui um, and ours is let's just close all these again uh ooh, did i change that back or not okay let's just give it a clean clean the solution rebuild it um our event here is these labels so we've got a command that exists in and that's because I've done the compiled bindings it picks it up and in the view model we've got a command an I command that in the constructor is a initiate it, uh, it, it, it calls this command and then you can pass in a method create a method so sorry I'm building whilst uh, in the code behind and it doesn't like that so you can create and extract a a method and this method here is just a bit like the clicked event that you do behind but this is a little bit better because you can now update your view model using this so let's take off that and that and then let's put one here and just quickly show you how this steps into the label Okay, am I still recording? I am still recording, brilliant. Okay, so we bound up, we're all working. We click on this update view model. So let me just show you that in code again. So update view model is this. It's got a command which um, is connected up into the view model. And then when you click it, um, the command gets triggered we're then going to just simply change the button I'm going to step into that so it's saying is it, if the value the new value is different to the existing value let's update it and then what this does then is calls that method inside there on property change we'll step into that and um, we're passing in the text label which then sends the event back to the UI to update return the new value I've been updated and there we go and it's doing exactly the same with the count as well so let me just uh, take off any breakpoints delete breakpoints and yes and then hit that super duper fast obviously a bit quicker because we're doing the compiled bindings but that is a collection of data this is just a command and this is your UI being updated dynamically. If you do get any questions, if I covered anything wrong, please correct me in the, the uh, comments. Uh, thank you very much for all the support on the other video I did last week. Really appreciate I was stunned. I think it's got 250 views and it was terrible production. Same as this one. You know, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a jun junior dev learning as I, I go along. So um, I've only been doing it for about a year and a, a half. So if there's anything on here that you don't agree with, please, please, by all means, just correct me in the comments. All right, take care. Thanks for watching. And uh, I need to.